Yo, yo, yo. Yo, I am excited. We got a lot of good stuff going on today. First, the FTC ends non-competes. What that means is in the United States, if you get a job and you make less than a certain amount of money, if you want to leave your job, you can now work at a competitor. Previously, many companies, when you work for them, they do not let you work for a competitor. So if you're a programmer and you want to work in defense, then you want to leave and you want to go to another defense company, uh, they'll say, oh, well, you can't work for our competitors for the next five years. Okay, great. Well, what kind of a developer are you if you can't work in the same industry for the next five years? It just kneecaps you. And it means you can never leave because if you leave, you have to start your career over in a new industry. That also means that your current employer just pays you less because they know you can't leave. With the lack of non-competes, so you can just leave your current employer, go to the new employer and do the same work. We've got other opportunities like small business. If you work in a salon, like you cut hair, a lot of times they will ask you to sign and say, if you're gonna cut hair with us, then you will not be cutting hair for anybody else within 50 miles. Same thing. That means if you've got a job, they can keep your salary low because if you wanna quit, you can't work anywhere nearby. And of course they have resources to go after you. And if you're cutting hair, you probably cannot afford a lawyer. Previously, these were already, these types of agreements, non, they're called non-compete agreements, were previously disallowed in California at the state level. However, the FTC has taken this up to disallow them at the federal level. This is really gonna change the business landscape. And it's, I think it's gonna take five years for people to figure this out. For example, you will see a lot more independent companies and small businesses. Technology companies, a lot of them are subject to non-competes. People that are writers or that are producing something, doing video for another company, they can quit and do it themselves. I think you have a good perspective on it though. It's kind of crazy, you know. I guess we haven't, like in Europe, seen that hard enforcement of it that you probably have seen in the US. Yeah, some of these are probably pretty harsh and some of the, yeah, the effect of that will definitely be, as you say, like people can't leave and employers can pay them less. So this affects, this affects everyone. My stepdad is a doctor. He sold his practice. He did dermatology. When he sold his business, part of the agreement was you can't do dermatology within 50 miles. They didn't know my stepdad loves to move. <laughs> like, he's all about that. Here's why I think this is a tech topic and a tech opportunity. You are going to see lots of individual small people starting their own business. And they're gonna have FU attitudes. They're gonna be like, you know what? I don't wanna cut hair anymore for this company. I'm gonna do it in my garage. So you're gonna cut hair in your garage. That's easy. Cut hair, buy scissors, 100 bucks worth of supplies. You can get a pretty good start. Okay, now you're gonna cut hair. How do you manage your appointments? But there's all of these systems that support these businesses that you're not going to have as a solopreneur. What are some of the people that are going to leave these, these companies, start their own business as individuals, and do they need software? Do they need something to run their business to help them compete effectively now that they don't have the infrastructure of a company behind them? We talk about AI a year ago, neural network programming. We're like, these are going to take our jobs. These are going to replace industries. And the reason we thought about that is because we understood it and nobody else understood it. This is obvious to us that these jobs are gonna disappear in the next five years. And so we kept talking about it. We talked, 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 talked. After a year of that down their throat every single day on the news, everybody gets it. We're kind of just waiting. We're, we're just waiting for our jobs to be replaced, for things to get cheaper, for everything to become a $10 subscription, for our cars to be, like we're just assuming our car is gonna become a $100 subscription. We're just waiting for that to happen. Like we're already living in the future, looking in the past. This is part of the future. This all lines up too. If these tools are available and people can use them, why does anybody work for anybody else? Why have companies? Why, why can't everybody just so, be solopreneur? We can work directly with them. The non-competes, non this is very forward thinking. Uh, meme culture. Uh, this topic you know, has come up oh, on fire over the past, I guess, year and a half, going crazy. We had an episode dedicated to meme coins. Uh, we had two of them. One of them was uh, 
basically Solana coins, you know, Sonic Obama. We're just looking at them. Okay, so you pick a word, you mint that word, and then you sell it to everybody else. That's basically what we're talking about. We're not talking about meme pictures. You know, they're not NFTs where you have to make it 10,000 pictures as fast as you can. Is this, is this what we're talking about? Is this the angle? So what's the culture? I mean, it has to, it's more than a fad. Fads don't last this long. NFT is more than a fad. NFT is obviously. The meme coins, there's definitely a space here for making things and not really trying hard and just uh, not, not trying hard on the product, but just pushing hard in the marketing and the community part. That makes sense. I think the ideas in crypto, the NFTs, the coins, the marketing, I think this is going to come closer and closer to Fortnite specifically and other types of online communities similar to Reddit. Just like instead of it's, you have to go to you have to go to Solana right now. Like you want meme coins, you got to go get a wallet. You got to go to Solana. You got to get that Telegram robot. I think these coins are going to become more successful as they embed themselves in existing communities. There's only so many people doing meme coins. I know it feels like it's just going up and up, but there's so many more people doing Fortnite, even like the second most popular game in Fortnite, which is you know maybe Lego Fortnite or something. Are you in New York? Did I hear you're here, or you're not come? I went through. I ran through. I came from Maine, Portland, Maine, all the way down to Philly. Oh, geez. Um, this weekend, I went to Mexico City Express. It was a very express uh, flight. But yeah, it was good uh, to hear that you were, you passed through the city. That's how I went there last time I went to Miami. I was in Condesa. That was like my oh, spot. Oh, Condesa. I, I stayed, love it. Uh, Condesa is amazing. I actually stayed in Roma, which is right, right next to Condesa. Yes. Love it. Yes. But one thing I really loved, um, they had a VR uh, Tutankhamun's experience. So they, you know, they walk you through different rooms, but one of the, like the biggest room, they, it was filled with sand. So they brought the sand from um, Egypt and they were, they were projecting on the sand. Um, they were projecting everywhere, but the projections on the sand were amazing and it was all about Tutankhamun's and you know his life so that was very cool all right I got one more topic for today and this is really exciting so this is the one more thing from my presentation at BananaCon and so do you remember when we talked about product authenticating products my mission here was to make everything authenticatable to put serial numbers on just everything you buy, verify it's authentic, verify the stuff inside of the product. Wouldn't it be cool if we could just take everything you buy and instead of having this, uh, we call them barcodes or in the US we call them uh, SKUs or in Europe we call them EANs or just barcodes. Just replace this on everything we buy with a QR code and put serial numbers in there. Wouldn't it be really awesome if we could just convince some major brand to do this for like all of their products. And I'm not talking luxury goods, I'm talking like normal stuff you would buy. That'd be really exciting. Wouldn't it be really awesome if I could tell you that brand like right now that they're gonna do this? And so I actually went looking into GS1. Now GS1 is the group that makes these barcodes work. So here's a barcode for uh, Campbell's, which is a can of soup. And the way this barcode works is the first six digits are a vendor. That's the vendor, Campbell's. And the next six digits, that's actually the product. So that would be like chicken noodle soup. And so the first six digits, those are, there's a registry, and that is assigned by this group called GS1. I talked to them, and we were talking about the future of the product labeling. They're actually working to replace these barcodes with QR codes, which is really exciting because the QR codes actually can store more than just the vendor and the product ID they can store serial numbers. That means everything you could buy can have a serial number on. And I was reading how do the serial numbers work and how do the QR codes work? And I'm reading the spec. There's a whole spec for this thing. GS1 digital link. Because they're actually gonna put QR codes with URLs. They have a special format for the URLs. And that means that the URL can work on the vendor's website, be like campbells.com slash blah, 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 blah. Or, it can actually work on other websites. The same URL works on other websites. It's kind of like IPFS, if you know how that works. Decentralized. It can also connect to blockchain. It can connect to any decentralized system. 
And so I was really excited about that because I was reading this. These are all the concepts we've talked about. This has actually been spelled out into a specification for GS1 with the group that brought you barcodes. So now the exciting thing is that barcodes are actually deprecated as of this year. So starting this year, they are recommending everybody to switch to QR codes for everything you buy from every vendor in every country on earth. So everything you buy will be using these new QR codes at some point. And that means everything that you buy can be connected to serial numbers for traceability, for authenticity, and can connect to blockchain systems and all the other systems that we care about for products and what's inside of the product and verifying it. Is it kosher? What is the sustainability of this product? And there's actually one specific reason that they care about that's motivating a lot of this too and will actually require people to do this called Digital Passport. This is run by European Union. European Union wants the individual products to register and to publish how much carbon is inside of them, fully compatible with this system. So that means if you go and buy something, we can trace how much carbon is in it and we can trace it up to the ingredients of that product as well. This is really exciting. I'm super surprised that this is happening. This was part of my 10 year plan that we would like think about these ideas. The fact that this is coming out, I was not ready for this. This can of soup right now, when you buy it, you've got one QR code on the back that tells you it's a can of soup. And then also somewhere there's an expiration date. In the future, the QR codes themselves can include expiration dates too. They have serial numbers, expiration dates, URLs, all kinds of stuff. So when you scan that can of soup, it will tell you before you try to buy it, but don't buy this, it's expired. It won't even sell it to you. These are just some of the major improvements that are happening. here. Like when there's a recall, just like the way we do recalls for cars. When there's a car recall, they tell you which VIN numbers. They say, this car is recalled, this one isn't, even if it's the same year. That same approach will work for everything. Everything you buy with a serial number on it, they can just tell you, oh, this can of soup is recalled. That one isn't. You don't have to hold it upside down or look for the lot number or the expiration date. You just scan it and it will know if this can is recalled or not. I'm really proud to have been any part of this discussion. I'm really excited about this. And this is the future of commerce that's gonna affect billions of people. And it starts this year. This is amazing. I love to see this. I feel like this is um, what makes sense. And I think that um, it's definitely about time that commerce brings in this technology into their products. I've always thought that the NFTs, you know, it, the market exploded within the artistic community because we are, you know, very open to new technologies. We love experimenting. We take risks. So we fit the demographic of the type of community that will explore and use these tools, especially when, you know, within the context of uh, secondary sales and royalties, like all of these benefits that artists saw first in NFTs, the commerce and all these uh, products uh, industry. I think this is something that now they can, you know, see how, Artists took advantage of it and all of the things that have grown and come out of it and now bring it into the basically mainstream through products. I think that it's definitely going to be a big push for this technology to be mass adopted. Yeah. The barcode came out in 1974. The first barcode was for Wrigley's gum. It took a few years, I think 1976, when a bunch of products used it. Now everything used these barcodes on the left, the linear barcodes. Everybody knows what QR codes are and everybody knows you can scan them with your phone. So this really is billions of people. Now, the fact that you're hearing it today on this phone call, if you haven't heard this before, that's just because you are you know, someone who cares about the future. We have to explain this to other people and make these things work, but we've been doing this for years. We've been making artwork, like you said, We've been making artwork that does these type of, has these features that it's traceable, accountable, verifiable. That's the example. We've shown through artwork that this can be done because of royalties. You know, because of royalties has been a major motivation for artwork. Royalties will not be major motivation for soup. However, 
recalls will be a major source of motivation for them. And I know that recalls for soup and royalties for artists for art sound very different, but they're very similar too. In order to achieve these things, you need accountability and you need systems that track the product back to the person who made it. That's why I love this work is, you know, I can find the similarities between artwork and royalties and saving, saving your kids from eating infected, you know, whatever food is out there. And they're related. Right. So I'm glowing right now. This is really exciting for me. You know, we've been talking about this forever and just highlighting these examples. And now we get to go build this world where there's just a, you know, it's a better world because of this stuff. So we're early. We are very early on this. And as promised, this is mainstream. This is as mainstream as it gets. Everything you buy in every country from every vendor is going to have this. That is mainstream. They connect to blockchain. They connect to decentralized systems. They're serialized. They are NFTs. So very awesome. Um, also, um, sometimes when I, you know, try to share or explain what, you know, an NFT is or what, you know, what's all of this in very simple terms, I tell people that, you know, to think of it as a transaction that is, you know, this is your, this is the ultimate receipt for a transaction. That's the reason why you can basically make an NFT out of anything because you need a receipt for a transaction. It could be a transaction for a service, for artwork, for a session. It could be for anything. So having this being attached to products, it's the ultimate transaction. So I think that that's so cool. It's like coming in full cycle. <music>